Anthony Robles winning NCAAs is one of the more interesting stories in NCAA history, mostly because he only has one leg. In 2011, he crutched his way to the center stage, but this was no real surprise to anyone involved in wrestling at the time. Regardless of his handicap, he was very, very good, and this is not the first time he had a good showing at NCAAs. He was already a two-time All-American before winning, making it to the semis in 2009, placing fourth, and in 2010, he placed seventh. Robles played to his strengths perfectly and was a very difficult wrestler to figure out. Eavesdrops of people who had to wrestle him revealed nothing less than bewilderment. The question was always, how do I wrestle him? What should I do? And that's the real question, isn't it? Only having one leg provides a few distinct advantages. The disadvantages are plenty for sure, but those are more on the surface and more obvious. The advantages are a little more complicated. Your leg on average comprises about 17% of your body weight. This means for a 150 pound human, 25 of those pounds are made up by your leg. So Anthony Robles, wrestling at 125, has the upper body of a 149 pound. There is a great disparity from the 125 pound weight class to the 149 pound weight class in terms of strength and size. However, only having one leg limits your mobility and your ability to use both of your legs to apply pressure, which means you're relying on just your body weight to feel heavy. So riding on top, for example, is much more difficult and relies on your ability to tie up your opponent's arms and pull things towards you. That's probably why he developed his cross rest tilt to such effectiveness. It was one of the few things he could successfully do on top, and due to his strength, it worked very well. The biggest advantage that Robles had however was unfamiliarity. You've been wrestling someone with two legs your entire career, but you have zero experience wrestling someone with one leg. All of the technique you know doesn't quite work the same. In neutral, do you attack his leg or do you attack his upper body, which is a lot stronger than yours? How do you finish a takedown? Normally, in the most basic sense, you attack one leg, then you attack the other. What do you do if there's no second leg to tie up? Simple questions about this are tough to answer, and that's the biggest thing he had going for him. Every single scenario is different, and adapting to it on the fly without practice is very difficult. You would want to spend a few practices working with him to figure out how things even go down. Watching his matches only tells part of the story, but of course, he's not going to give that to you. That would be silly. And so Anthony made it to the finals in 2011, facing Mac Madonna, who won NCAAs as a freshman the year before, no slouch by any means. The match starts, Robles immediately goes down to a knee, which is normal for his style on his feet and very smart. No idea how he would fare if he tried to stay up in a stance the whole time. Mac quickly lowers his level to match the elevation, also a good idea, because if he stayed up in a stance here and tried to hand fight, he could easily step into a quick shot. Hand fighting in this situation here is ideal, but you have to cut an angle quickly, and especially against Robles, you can't get into any deep ties where his strength will take precedence. Robles attacks wrists, posts them down, looks like he's trying to maintain some distance here for a reason. It might be difficult for him to stay on his base if you go over under or go an underhook in general. Keeping the wrist controlled limits what your opponent can do with his hands. Posting wrists also grants the ability to go arm drag, which is what Robles lunges for and then gets a piece of the leg. Matt is able to get himself almost back to a front headlock. He's trying to use that wrist, post it down, get his head free, but Robles clamps the head down, puts his head in the side, and threatens a near side cradle. Matt is forced to throw his right hip down, kick his leg forward, and circle away to avoid the cradle, but then Robles uses his hips being down to jump behind and get the takedown. Scores 2-0 Robles. From here, it just gets worse and worse. Matt is already starting on his stomach, with Robles having the cross wrist controlled. Minute 30 in, Robles keeps good pressure, pulls that wrist under, and rolls through for that cross wrist tilt. He isn't able to hold him on his back for too long. You would normally use one leg to elevate the far leg and the other leg to control the hip but Robles is able to get a two count, which is good for two points. Robles is trying to let go of one side of the two-on-one to get awarded the points, which is something you can try to do to get points and then go right back to what you were doing, but the better refs typically see through this. This ref doesn't bite, and only gives a two when Robles lets go of the two-on-one entirely. Scores 4-0, Robles. 50 seconds left to go in the first, Robles has what we used to call a bow and arrow, now more commonly called an arm lever, pulls the wrist down and grabs it with his right hand, which would give that cross wrist tilt again, but instead he decides to grab from between between the legs with his left hand. We call this a ball and chain. Robles goes to hook under the arm, which normally you would put your elbow in the bottom guy's back, use your arm like a crowbar, and pull him backwards for a tilt, but instead Robles decides to roll forward. This might be because when you pull the situation backwards for the tilt, you have to keep pressure with your right knee on the mat while your left leg hooks over the top leg so your opponent can't just roll through and get loose. Robles obviously can't do both of those at the same time. Robles stabilizes, uses the ball and chain tilt to get a five count, worth three points in that day and age. Score is now seven zero. Anthony did have to dive at the leg when the situation unraveled. Usually the ball and chain tilt is very difficult to keep control of. You would want to hook the free leg with your top leg to force your opponent to roll away from you when you let it go, but Robles doesn't have that luxury. Second period, Matt takes neutral, which is a good idea here. Down by seven, you have a lot of ground to make up, and bottom didn't go well last period. Best to try your luck on your feet again. The second period, however, goes by without score. It doesn't look like Robles is trying too hard to get a takedown, which is fine. He's still attacking legs and being productive, so you can't really call him for stalling.
sprawling too much. And Matt is staying out in front. He walks into a shot or two, which he has to sprawl away from, which wastes a lot of time. He would need to create a good angle, use an arm drag or Russian tie-up, or something that allows him to circle behind, but he's either not able to or doesn't have a great game plan for it. Snapping the head down and getting a front headlock is super difficult due to the size and strength disparity. He can't really jump behind and attack the leg. It's super easy for Robles to match the angle. It's a weird situation for Matt. He really needs to get an angle, jump behind, attack locked hands around the waist to secure the takedown. You can always lock and then let go of it once the ref awards the two, which is a sneaky little technicality that not many people take advantage of. Third period, Robles takes bottom. Matt elects to try to ride him out and look for a turn or a possible pin. This strategy usually doesn't work well in general. Stalling on bottom and not giving up a pin is pretty easy for an experienced wrestler. I've seen this lose matches way more often than win. We generally call this riding someone out to lose. You have a much better shot if you let them go and try neutral, but neutral hasn't been working very well, so this is Matt's last good attempt to add a victory here. Matt tries almost everything, but generally bounces from one thing to another and isn't able to get any real traction. He ends up spending half of the third period out in a front headlock. He tries a cement job, quarter Nelson, you name it. Robles is in full shutdown mode, burning a lot of the clock, but doing so fairly productively. Attacking wrists and posting, attacking legs, which is difficult to call for stalling because he technically is doing stuff. He does give up a stalling point by the end of the match, making the score 7-1, but it's way too little too late. And so Anthony Robles is a Division I national champion. The only person to ever win NCAAs with only one leg. You likely won't see this happen ever again. There aren't many one-legged wrestlers in general, but if there is anyone out there listening with one leg and is thinking about wrestling, you really should give it a shot. No one will know how to wrestle you, and as long as you weight train appropriately, you'll likely be stronger than everyone you wrestle. So you have some very interesting advantages. Not trying to take anything away from Anthony's accomplishment, it is nothing less than amazing and inspiring.